What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title today, we're gonna to be talking about things I learned from my college teammates. We've done the video talking about things I've learned from the pros, players that have made it to the NBA, but I've been blessed enough to play with a lot of extremely talented college basketball players. There are a lot of things that I've learned from these players that I really think can help some of you guys' games. And there are a lot of things, honestly, that I learned that can help you guys in life. Let's jump into it. First player I wanna to talk to you guys about is Darnell Rogers. If you guys don't know who that is, Darnell is the shortest player in Division One basketball, listed as 5'2", and I'll be honest, just from being around him, I'm not even sure if he's that. He was an extremely popular basketball player as he was growing up because everyone was wondering, including myself, how is a player at this size able to still be so extremely effective and still be able to beat all the odds and get himself a full ride Division I basketball scholarship. One of the main excuses that you hear from a lot of people is, oh, if I had five or six more inches, I'd be D1, I'd be in college, I'd be in the NBA. He's an example of why that excuse does not work at all. I'm gonna tell you guys why. One of the main things I learned from Darnell when you hear it all the time, it's kind of a cliche statement is heart over hype. But the difference is I want to explain to you guys how he exemplified that statement because a lot of the times coaches will just say that, yeah, you need to have heart over hype, but they won't really explain exactly how other players have utilized that to still be successful. So for Darnell, you know, when all of us saw him on that first day, I was kind of like, bro, like there is no way that this player right here, you know, I've seen the mixtapes, I've seen everything, but I need to see it in person because I still kind of was skeptical. I didn't really believe that a player at that height would still be effective when we start playing pickup, when we start practicing. When I tell you guys the first time we played pickup and I saw this man literally work out, I'm talking about pull up threes. I'm talking about coming off the pick and roll, getting in the paint, finishing with floaters. I'm talking about hitting you, finishing through contact, finishing in a hundred different ways, knocking down shots. And we all kind of left that first pickup session like, wait, like, no, like this dude can go. Like it wasn't for show, it wasn't fake. And why I say he exemplifies heart over height is his confidence. That's one of the biggest things I wanna to talk to you guys about from the shortest basketball players up to Victor Wimanyama. This is the reason why players like that are so successful is his confidence. Honestly, I think he might be one of the most confident people I've ever met in my life. You wouldn't even know he was shorter because when he walks in the gym, when he walks in a room, he holds himself as, okay, it don't matter how tall I am, I'm still that guy and I'm still like that. And it was like that across the board. So when we would come to practice, when we would come to pick up, it wouldn't matter. He's going at you full speed. He's going to attack you and he's going to utilize what he's been given. He might've been shorter, but he was gonna use everything he's been given to his advantage. So that means his quickness on the offensive end, when there's somebody in front of him, he's so hard to stay in front of because he is so close to the ground, because he is so quick. Flip that on the defensive end, as a defender, he got after it every single time. I can't tell you how many times he made our guards so mad because he's right there under you. So you cannot dribble the ball the second you put it down, it's gone. And because he also understood his stature, he made sure that he was in the weight room. So he was also extremely strong. Remember I tell the story of, he understands how to attack the paint. Quick little tip for my smaller guards. When you're attacking a big man, especially if it's a shot blocker, try and be the aggressor. Be the hammer, hit the big man, try and hit him square in the chest. My arms, most likely, if you hit me in the chest, are probably gonna come down. You're either gonna get fouled or you're gonna create the space to be able to finish in the paint. He knew all those things and he utilized all of that wrapped up in his confidence, wrapped up in his inner knowing that it doesn't matter how tall I am, I'm still gonna be the most confident player out here on the court because I know how good I am and I know I can be effective out here. So for all of you guys, I just want y'all to know that confidence is one of the most important parts of the game. If you have confidence, I don't care if you're four foot 11, I don't care if you're five two, five eight, six two, six eight. If you have confidence, it can take your game a long way. I don't care how nervous you are. I don't care how much doubt you have in your mind. Still have that inner sense of confidence that it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna go out here and attack. I promise you, you'll surprise yourself. The next player I wanna talk to you guys about is Troy Baxter Jr. If you guys don't know who that is, I suggest you pause this video right now, open up a new tab on YouTube and search his name. This is one of the most talented basketball players I've ever been around. He was a top 100 player coming out of high school, was in all the mixtapes, was in the All-American games. Like This was a pretty popular basketball player coming out. A 6'8", 6'9", 3'4", with a 40 plus inch vertical. I'm talking about there would be times in practice where he would shoot a deep three. I'm standing in the paint, trying about to get the rebound. All of a sudden he jumps over everybody and dunks his own shot back. Keep in mind, he's the one that shot the ball. He would shoot it and dunk his own miss back. Like he was that freakishly athletic. 
and he would knock down shots from all over the floor. I'm talking about turnarounds, fadeaways, everything. And one of the biggest things he taught me is talent alone doesn't always get the job done. You hear it all the time, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, but I'll be honest with you guys, once you get to a certain level of basketball and you see some of these guys out here, like when I was playing with Zion, I'm thinking to myself, shoot, I don't know how much hard work I gotta put in if I wanna get to that level, but I don't even, I'm not even sure if I can, right? And that's the truth, honestly. There are some players out there that are so extremely talented that they can get away with some things, but for 99.9% .9 of the population, I don't care how talented you are, there are other intangibles that goes into being a successful basketball player. Keep in mind, in no way am I saying that Troy did not work hard. What I'm saying is, I would go home after practices and be in my room and be like, how is this not a first round lottery pick? I'm watching a 6'9 wing shoot threes and come put back his misses. I'm watching him windmill oops in practice. I'm watching him get it on the block, get it on the elbow, shoulders, fadeaways, all type of anything. I'm talking about doing some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen on a basketball court. And I'm just sitting there like, bro, how is this not a first round draft pick? And this is when I started to realize that talent is only one part of it. There are so many more intangibles that they want to see, especially if you want to get to that three-letter league. They want you to have a high basketball IQ. They want you to be able to play defense. They want to know that you know every single play. They want to know that you're a gym rat. They want to know any and everything about you, your game, your habits, everything. Remember how I tell you guys when you're trying to get recruited to college and there are so many things that coaches want to see, and I talk to you guys about it off the court. They want to know about your character. They want to know about your grades. They want to know if they go to a practice, will you dive on the ground or will you just coast through practice? They want to know everything. Imagine that, but on a whole different level if you want to get to that three-letter lead. This is why I talk to you guys about building these habits early. Talent is not enough. What did Giannis just say in an interview? Because Gilbert Arenas was saying that, yeah, you know, he's done all this, but he still needs to be more skilled. Giannis literally said, skill doesn't always get the job done. You can be the most skilled basketball player in the world and still not make the NBA. Why? Because you got players that might be a little bit less skilled than you that are willing to do any and everything, set screens. If they got to be a big man and they a guard, they will do anything they have to to get on that floor. I want to get this across to you guys that talent is not the only indicator of success. You have to do more than that. On that high school level, remember what I just said. You have to do more than just be that extremely talented player. It is what it is. You might feel like you're this and that and you don't have to. You do. You do. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about, and it's a little bit more on the serious side, is things that I learned from my teammates at Grambling. Because I went to FGCU out of high school, beach on campus, pretty nice area, a lot of my teammates are from nicer backgrounds or they had a pretty easy journey to get to the Division One level. I go to Grambling and I'm playing with a former five-star recruit who was playing with Team USA Basketball and now he's at Grambling. I got teammates who had a lot of offers, did something, now they lost all of them. Now they're at Graham. I got teammates who transferred from high major down. I got teammates coming from D2, D3. I got teammates coming from JUCO. I got teammates coming from all levels of basketball in all different places. And just from talking to them, hearing their stories made me realize and remember that there are players out there that are playing with a different level of hunger because they actually have real life situations that they got to get out of. I got teammates telling me, yeah, I got to make this work. Like I'm staying here. I'm not really trying to go home because if I go home, this might happen or I might be forced into this situation. I got teammates who got kids, family, some of them staying on campus with us. So every time they step in the gym, they got to have on their mind, okay, I got to make it pro because I got to make enough money to support my family. I had teammates with real life issues going on while they were still trying to play the game of basketball. And I feel like there are a lot of basketball players who you're extremely blessed. I was one of them and you kind of take it for granted. You take for granted that you can actually go out there and play a game and all it is is a game to you. Because for some other players in college, for some players in high school that are trying to get that scholarship, it's make it or break it for them. This is a serious situation that they're in, so they don't have time to play games every time you step out there on the court. So for all of you players out there who take it for granted, maybe you don't want to practice today. Maybe you don't want to do this, this, and that. Maybe you just don't feel like you have that hunger for the game. I just want you guys to remember that there are players out there who are in high school that are trying to get those scholarships so that they can bring their daughter, their son, and whoever they're with, with them on campus so that they can live rent-free. People don't really think about that. And that's who you're going up against. You got players who I got this situation at home, so I really need to get to college so I can get away from this because I don't want to be drawn into this. Think about that. Every single time you don't feel like practicing, you don't want to work out, understand that there are people out there with real life issues, your same age, trying to chase the same scholarship you want, trying to chase the same pro contract you want. 
Think about that every time you want to be lazy. Really wanted to make this video to let you guys know that there are things you can learn from players at all different levels. You don't just have to look to NBA players. Look to that player who's from your neighborhood who went D2. And you might not think he's all that, but guess what? He beat the odds. If you guys know, over 500,000 high school basketball players, he's one of the ones that got a full-ride scholarship. Look to him. Look at other players. Don't just look to the pros. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the subscriber breakdowns or the one-on-one -on -one evaluations, hit my website in the description. Also, if you have any questions for me or need any advice, hit my link for Noodle in the description. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time with the next video.